What is up everybody, Near here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an animation blend space as well as the character blueprint so that you guys can have your own little animations and customize it a little bit more. So let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to be showing you guys how to do is make this blend space right here. Then we're going to be going over the event graph as well as going over a locomotion state machine. And you guys can ignore this crouch moving and crouch down here. We're just gonna be focusing on these main nodes. But first off, we're gonna start with making the blend space. All right, so back on the main window, what we're gonna do is come down to our content drawer and we're gonna find whatever skeleton we wanna use. So for me, I'm gonna be using the female Android skeleton. So I got this asset off of the Epic Games Marketplace and that some of the animations that I'm going to be using come from the mocap animation set as well as the close combat animation pack. So I'll put a picture of both of those up here on the screen so you guys can go check them out for yourselves if you'd like to use the same animations. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to come up to animation and we're going to go to blend space. So now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down to our female android skeleton and we're going to name this android underscore bs for blend space so now we just double click now in our blend space what we want to focus on is on the left side where we see horizontal axis and vertical axis if these tabs aren't already dropped down for you go ahead and click the little arrow and drop them down and so the first one we're going to name direction we're going to set the minimum axis value to negative 180 and we're going to set the maximum to 180 we're going to leave the grid divisions at 4 and we're going to move down and now we're going to name we're going to name the vertical axis speed we're going to keep the minimum value 0 and we're going to make the maximum value 1000 the reason I'm making it 1000 is because I'm going to end up implementing a sprint mechanic in the future so I want my blend space to adapt to it so in total you're going to need 9 different animations and you can change the grid divisions over here on the horizontal or vertical axis depending on whatever your animations are so you can customize it however you want but you're going to need 9 animations in total. You're going to need an idle animation, a walking forward animation, a backwards walking animation, a running, a backwards running, a right strafe, left strafe, right strafe running, and then left strafe running. As well as a jump start, jump loop, and jump end animation if you want custom jumps. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our idle animation right here. And we're going to drag it to the very center point at 0, 0. So we're going to drag in another one, and another one, and another one and another one. So we're going to come to the far left one and we're going to make sure that this one is negative 180 and the speed is 0. We're going to come to the next one we're going to make sure that this is negative 90. We're going to come to the key to the right side and make sure that the direction is 90 and the speed is 0. And then we're going to come to the one on the far right and we're going to make sure it's 180 and the speed is 0 as well. So they're all leveled out. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to grab our walking animation and we're going to drag it right in the middle and we're going to click on it. So we're gonna change this to make sure that the speed is 400 and the direction is zero, again, so it's right directly in the middle. And then we're gonna grab our running animation and we're gonna drop it right at the top. And we're gonna make sure that the speed is 1000 and direction is zero as well, so it's at our max speed. Now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna grab our walking backwards and we're gonna drop it all the way on the far right side and we're gonna drop another one on the far left side. We're going to click on this key point and we're going to make sure the direction is negative 180 degrees and that the speed is 400 as well to match the middle point. And we're going to do the same thing for the right side but we're going to make sure it's positive 180. Now we're going to come down here and grab our running backwards animation and drop it on the same corners on both sides. And we're going to double check to make sure that both of them have speed 1000 and direction. And those are all set. Now we're going to come and we're going to grab our left strafe walk and we're going to drop it in the middle on the left side and we're gonna drop our right strafe walk in the middle on the right side. Come in here and fix the values to make sure that they're even. And then we're just gonna come over here and grab our right strafe run, drop it at the top, and our left strafe run, and drop that at the top. Make sure that we fix the values so that everything is even. Now if we hold our left control button and we drag up, we can see that our animation blueprint is working very smoothly. It strafes to the left side, it strafes to the right side, our animation blend space is all set. Back on our main window, we'll come back down to the content drawer. We're going to right click and we're going to come up to animation and we're going to go to animation blueprint. We're going to find our skeleton again. We're going to name it android anim underscore blueprint. Now we're just going to double click it. And you'll see that there's nothing in here. The first thing we're going to have to do is go to the event graph. 
we're gonna grab this try get pawn owner and we're gonna move it down and we're gonna start here on our event blueprint update node so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to variables and we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call it character and we're gonna make its variable type character alright now we're gonna grab out our character we're gonna hit get and we're just gonna right click it and we're gonna click convert to validated get and we're gonna pull that up here and we're gonna plug this in now from this is valid pin we're gonna drag off and we're gonna type in sequence We're going to add two pins until there's four total. And now we're going to have to create five new variables in total. Those five variables are going to be is falling with a type of boolean, velocity as a vector, ground speed as type real, is moving as another boolean, and direction as another real. And the reason I'm having you make them now is it'll make everything else a lot easier so we don't have to keep going back and forth and making new variables. We already have all of them. Now for zero, we're gonna drag off and we're gonna type in set is falling. And behind this, what we're gonna do is drag out our character reference and get. Now off of this, we're gonna drag out and type in character movement. Now we pull off of here and we type in is falling and we connect the return value to our is falling variable. So for one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off and we're gonna type set velocity. And we're just gonna highlight these two. We're gonna hit control C, control V, paste them right below it. So then we're gonna pull off of the character movement and type in get velocity. And we're gonna plug this into our velocity node. And that sets our velocity. Now for number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag off and type set ground speed. We're gonna move this over here and then we're gonna grab our velocity we're gonna get it type in vector length XY and grab this return value and plug it into our ground speed now for three what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off and we're gonna type set is moving we're gonna pull it way over here to the side so we're gonna move back just a little bit and we're gonna copy this character and character movement up here again we're gonna paste it in here so now, off of this, we're going to type current acceleration. And we're going to pull off of it again and get last update velocity. Now off of the update velocity, we're going to pull up here and we're going to type in the equal sign. And we're going to look for not equal. We're going to make this little tiny value down here, 0.1. And then we're going to drag off of here and we're going to type in and. And hit enter. And then plug this into is moving. We're gonna come over here to the left side and grab our ground speed and we're gonna get, get ground speed. We're gonna drag off of here and we're gonna type in greater. We're gonna make the value itself nine. And we're gonna plug this side into the and boolean. So we're gonna pull off of set is moving and we're gonna set the direction now. So now we're gonna move it back a little bit and we're gonna right click and type in event blueprint initialize animation. I'm gonna scroll in a little bit. So now we're gonna pull off this pin and type cast a third person character. And now we're gonna come back here and we're gonna grab our try get pawn owner. And we're gonna connect this to our object pin. Now we're gonna drag off of our cast a third person and we're gonna type in set character and scroll all the way to the bottom until we see this. And now we're gonna grab our as third person character pin and drag it into the character. So now we're gonna pull off of the blue pin and we're gonna type in get velocity as well as get active rotation. And we're gonna line those up. Now we're gonna right click and we're gonna type in calculate direction. And we're gonna move this up just a little bit and we're gonna grab our return value from here, plug it into velocity. And we're gonna grab our return value from the rotation and plug it into our rotation and then our return value from there into our direction. And now that is all set. Now, that's our event graph done. I know that that looks like a lot, but hopefully I was able to break it down for you guys and uh, make it a little bit easier to comprehend. I know I probably went through it very quickly, but it's not too complicated. Now we can move into our anim graph. Now within the anim graph itself, we're going to right click and we're going to type in state machine. And we're going to add a new state machine. And we're going to name it locomotion. Now we're going to right click and we're going to type in default slot. And then we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna connect this to the source and this to the output. We can compile save right now. And it's giving us a warning because there's nothing in our locomotion. So we go ahead and open this up. If you right click within here, you'll see you have four different choices. We're gonna add a state. We're gonna call this idle. We're gonna add another state and call it running. We're gonna add another state and call it jump start. Another one named jump loop. 
one more named jump end, and then one last one named walk and jump. Now, from entry, we're gonna go ahead and click, we're gonna drag to idle. From idle, we're gonna drag up to jump start. From jump start, we're gonna drag to jump loop. From jump loop to jump end, and then from jump end back down to idle to form a little clockwise loop. Now off of idle, we're gonna drag to running, and then we're gonna drag back from running to idle. We're gonna do the same thing from running to walking jump, and then from walking jump back to running. And then we're just gonna drag once off of walking jump into the jump loop. This is the basis of our locomotion state machine, and it's fairly simple. So now we're gonna go into our idle animation state. We're gonna come down here to the right and grab our Android blend space, and plug this into the result. And since I had us set up the variables earlier, we don't have to go back and do anything. We can just grab our speed and plug it into the speed and our direction, and plug it into the direction. We'll hit compile and save. And you can already see that it's adopting our blend space in the top corner. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and highlight this and we'll hit control C to copy it. We'll go back to our locomotion and we'll go to our running state and we'll just go ahead and control V, paste this in here and then connect up the result compile and save it, go back to our locomotion, go to our jump start, and we'll go ahead and find our jump start animation and plug that in. Go to our jump loop, we'll grab our jump loop animation, plug that in. Now we'll go to our jump end, we'll grab our jump end animation and plug that in as well. And last but not least, what we're gonna do is come up here to walking jump and we're going to plug our jump start in here as a filler animation. You can put a uh, you can put whatever animation you want as like a midway jump so you could have like a little hop animation if you really wanted to but for right now this will work. Now that all of the animations are taken care of now we just have to do the little pins in between and this is really easy to set up as well. So from our idle to our jump start our condition is our is falling so we can just plug that in. From our jump start to our jump loop what we'll have to do is we come in here and right click and type in time remaining ratio from our jump start animation so we'll drag off of here and we'll grab a less node and we'll go ahead and plug this in you can make this value anywhere between 0 and 1 this is just going to blend the animation based on the time remaining in it so for me I'm just gonna make it 0.5 so now from our jump loop to jump end all we have to do is grab is falling we'll get it and we'll pull off of the is falling and we'll type in not and we're looking for the not boolean specific and we'll just drag that off we'll compile save and then for our jump end is very similar to our jump start to jump loop we're gonna have to right click and type in time remaining we'll grab our ratio for jump end and we'll pull off and we'll type in less again we'll plug this up and we'll go ahead and make this value one now our whole jump loop is taken care of the last thing that we have to do is fill out these five so for our idle to our running, we'll just come in here and our condition is our is moving. Plug that in, we'll go back to locomotion. Then for our running back to our idle, we'll come in here and we'll grab is moving again. And we'll grab our not boolean. And we'll plug that in. All this is doing is basically saying when our character is moving, he'll go into our running phase. And when he's not, he'll go back into our idle phase. That's why we went ahead and copied the blend space into our running state. You don't have to do this, you can combine them both as one, but I chose to do this so that I could have a separate walking jump animation for later. Now, from our running to our walking jump, our condition is is falling. We'll just go ahead and plug that in and we'll go back. And from walking jump back to running, our condition is falling and not. Plug that up, compile, save. So the last thing that we have to do is our walking jump to jump loop. So we'll come in here. We're going to right click and we're going to grab time remaining on our animation. And we're going to type in less again. And we're going to go ahead and make this 0.4. Then we'll go ahead and plug this up, compile and save everything. And now we should be done. So that is our state machine and our animation graph finished, as well as our event graph. So now the last thing that we have to do is we come down to our content drawer and we open up our third person character blueprint. We'll find our female android skeleton and then we'll come over here and we'll type in android again and we'll find our blueprint. And now we'll compile and save 
And the one thing, if you want to be able to see your strafing animations and everything, you'll have to come up here to your actual third person character blueprint and you'll have to find under the pawn tab your use controller rotation yaw and make sure that it's ticked. So now if we go ahead and hit play, we should be able to see that our animations work perfectly. Perfect. We've got our strafing animations, we've got our back walking animations. It's a little janky and wonky, but I just got to mess with a little bit of variables and it should be fine. But uh, this is a basis that you guys can take and expand upon and do uh, whatever you want with it. So I hope you guys like this. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment for me and tell me if there's anything that I can improve on or uh, if there's any more ways that I can do this in the future and make new videos for you guys on different topics. I very much appreciate the support from all of you guys. We're very close to 100 subscribers and it's just going uphill from here. So thank you so much for watching. Near out.